Hello, English learners and music lovers. Welcome to Explained in English. My name is Kaya, and today I'm explaining the song Don't Know Why by Nora Jones. Don't Know Why is the perfect rainy day song. That means it's a perfect song to listen to when it's raining outside, but it's also great if it's raining in your mind, if you're feeling a bit melancholic, wanting to understand, but struggling to find answers. Before we go through the lyrics, I highly recommend that you listen to the real song first. You can hear the music, read the song lyrics, and follow along with a transcript of this song explanation all for free. I put all of these things together for you at explainedinenglish.com. There's also a direct link in the description of this episode. All right, let's move into the lyrics. The first verse begins with the line, I waited till I saw the sun. Here we're being told a story, and stories are often in the past tense. This story begins with someone waiting. Often when you wait for something, you're not moving. That is, you're staying in the same place, the same location. And whenever you wait, this implies the passage of time. So while you're waiting, time is passing, time keeps going by. This person waited until they saw the sun. So we get the sense that they waited all night long. They sat around and waited until the morning, until sunrise. They waited up until the moment when they could see the sun. I waited till I saw the sun. I don't know why I didn't come. It sounds like she was going to meet someone, like they made plans to both go to the same place. But for some reason, she didn't come to that location. She didn't go. The verbs to come and to go are very similar. But the verb to come is always used between two people. It describes the movement of one person towards the other person. So I would say, I'm coming to your party. That means I'm moving towards you. Or I could ask you, are you coming here? Meaning, will you be moving towards me in my direction? The verb to go is much more broad. You can use it in many more situations. So, keeping that in mind, we understand that when she says, I don't know why I didn't come, that she didn't move towards someone. She didn't move in their direction. The verse continues, I left you by the house of fun. Now we know for sure that she's talking about not meeting with someone, not meeting up. It sounds like they made a plan to see each other, by this house of fun, but she didn't come. She never went there. Instead, she left this person alone, kind of abandoned them there. We don't know what the house of fun is. To me, it sounds like some place at a carnival or an amusement park, or it could also be some house or some location where they would meet up to kiss and uh, be intimate. In any case, they made a plan to meet there, but she didn't come. She never came. And she says, I don't know why I didn't come. I don't know why. And now we move into verse 2. It begins. When I saw the break of day, I wish that I could fly away. The break of day is the very, very early morning. It's the first part of the morning when you can begin to see light. I picture this person waiting around all night long, and then they begin to see light. 
It's like the break of day. When I saw the break of day, I wished that I could fly away. Here, fly away just means be somewhere else. She wished or hoped. It was her desire that she could be somewhere else. Fly away like a bird in the sky. But of course, she's not a bird. She can't just fly away. She's stuck on the ground. In fact, she's kneeling on the ground. The verse says, instead of kneeling in the sand. Kneeling means that you're on your knees. That is, you're not standing up on your feet and you're not sitting down on your butt. Instead, or rather, you're kneeling. You're kneeling on your knees. Here we find out that she's probably on the beach because it says that she's kneeling in the sand. Sand is the word for all the tiny little eensy weensy rocks that you can find on beaches. So we have to picture her on this beach kneeling in the sand. And the verse ends saying, catching teardrops in my hand, which means that she's crying. She's feeling very sad, and so there are tears or teardrops falling from her eyes. And these teardrops are falling right into the palm of her hand. She's catching the teardrops in her hand. And now we get into the chorus, which Nora sings so beautifully. It goes, My heart is drenched in wine, which in spoken English, these sounds are often get pushed together. So my heart is drenched sounds like my heart is, my heart is drenched. Drenched is a great word. It means completely wet. So if your heart is drenched in wine, then it's filled with wine. It's completely soaked. Imagine that it's raining very hard outside and you go out and very soon you'd be drenched your clothes would be drenched or completely wet the heart here is symbolic for her feelings her thoughts and the emotional side of her she's been trying to drown out those feelings to run away from her emotions by drinking wine and she's drunk so much alcohol so much wine that her heart is now drenched. My heart is drenched in wine, but you be on my mind forever. So even though she's a little drunk, even though she's tried to numb her feelings, it doesn't really help. She says, you'll be on my mind forever, which basically just means she can't stop thinking about this person. She can't let them go. This person will be on her mind for all time, forever. The song continues in verse 3 with the line, Out across the endless sea, I would die in ecstasy. Remember that she's on the beach, so she's looking out at the water, the sea, or the ocean. And if you've ever looked out at the sea, you would see <laughs> that it's endless. It's so big and so vast, it seems like it never ends. It's endless. The sea here could be symbolic of potential, of possibility. She's saying, if I were out there, if I were out and moving across that sea, then my life would be full of possibility, full of potential. And I would be a lot happier than I am now, she says. I would die in ecstasy. Ecstasy is like an intense feeling of happiness or joy. When you're ecstatic, you're feeling very blissful, very euphoric. So if she had taken that risk, even if her life ended, even if she died, well, she would die in happiness, in bliss, in ecstasy. Out across the endless sea, I would die in ecstasy, but I'll be a bag of bones driving down the road alone. 
I like this phrase, a bag of bones. It's great imagery. If you're feeling like a bag of bones, then it means that you're not feeling very alive. There's nothing more to you than your skin and your bones. You're just a body, a lifeless bag of bones. Of course, bones are like the framework of your body. They're what make up your skeleton. And the bag is symbolic of your skin, as in something you use to carry around your bones, like a sack or some kind of container. <laughs> but I'll be a bag of bones driving down the road alone. This line is probably once again symbolic. The road is like her life, and she's going to go through life or drive down the road of her life alone, without anyone else, just her. Usually when we drive, we're driving in a car, and cars always travel on roads. If you drive down a road, you're just moving along on it. In English, we say going down a road, even when you're not literally moving down, you're just taking that road. And now we get to the last verse of the song, verse 4. Something has to make you run. I don't know why I didn't come. She's saying that there has to be a reason. There's always something, some cause, which makes people run. Running usually means that you're moving your body as fast as you can, like in a race. But you can also run away or run from something, which means that you're trying to get away, you're trying to escape. She wants to know why she didn't keep seeing this person, why she didn't come to meet them. She knows there must be something, some reason, but she doesn't understand why yet. She only knows that she's experiencing this strong feeling. She describes her feeling like this. She says, I feel as empty as a drum. Drums are musical instruments which are used to keep a beat. You can hear lots of different types of drums, but they might sound like boom, 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 boom. In order to make this sound, a drum has to be empty or with lots of space inside. It's once again great imagery, hollow and empty, like a drum. And the song ends with the lines, I don't know why I didn't come. To me, this song seems to be about someone who was scared. They were afraid to take a risk. They seem to really like this person. Maybe they even felt in love with them. But something kept them from meeting up or from continuing the relationship. And because they felt scared, because they were unsure of what to do, they just waited around. They waited so long that it was too late. And at that point, they started feeling regret. This regret and confusion, not understanding the reason why she made that decision, leads her to want to get away from it all, either by drinking wine or wishing that she could fly away. She seems very trapped in the idea of what could have been and feels destined to be alone and empty. One thing I didn't know about this song was that it was written by a guy named Jesse Harris. And while Nora Jones, with her beautiful voice, made this song popular, it's essentially a cover of his song. You can listen to both recordings of the song by clicking the link in this episode's description. I'd be really happy to hear if these explanations are helping you. Just give me a like or a comment on Facebook or YouTube. It's also a really big help when you share these episodes with friends and family. I know there are a lot of people out there who want to learn English and probably even more who like music. So thank you for helping me get this out to more people. And as usual, thank you for listening. All right, that's it for today. 
I'll see you all in the next explanation. Bye for now. Oh